Dies ist der Mauticast. Alles über Open Source Marketing Automation mit Mautic. Und das hier ist dein Gastgeber, Eki Gümbel. Ja, frohes neues Jahr, Thomas. Frohes neues Jahr, Eckart. Ja, frohes neues Jahr, Mautic Welt. Frohes Und neues Jahr da draußen. Genau. Ähm, Hallo zusammen, wir nehmen tatsächlich relativ am Anfang dieses Jahres auf und mhm. weil, wir es, weil wir das neue Jahr haben, haben wir jetzt auch ein bisschen futuristisches Thema ausgesucht. <lacht> Futuristisch? Nämlich, ja, naja, es ist nicht ganz neu, aber doch schon ein bisschen spacig. Und zwar sprechen wir mit dem Gaurav Mishra aus New York ähm, über das Thema Omnichannel Marketing und Voice in Verbindung mit Mautic, mhm. was ja irgendwie weit weg klingt, aber vielleicht gar nicht so weit weg ist, wie man das glauben mag. Details dazu im Interview. Details dazu im Interview. Ja, und wir haben noch einen kleinen Teaser. Es gibt jetzt nämlich tatsächlich die erste Ausgabe unseres Newsletters, genau. des Mauticast Newsletters. Ähm, wer den letzten Mauticast gehört hat, der hat ja mitbekommen, dass der unofficial Newsletter vom Chris eingestellt, sich eingestellt hat. Ja, genau. Ähm, und wir haben gesagt, wir haben die Infos ohnehin bei uns durch die Mauticast recherche und wir schicken die auch als ganz schlanken Newsletter regelmäßig einmal durch die Welt. Und ihr könnt euch das gerne abonnieren unter mauticast.de slash Newsletter. Genau, und der Link dazu ist natürlich auch in den Show Notes. Genau, ja, ja sonst vergisst man ja auch immer so. Mhm. Mhm. Ja, äh, es gab tatsächlich ein Weihnachtsrelease, äh, ein Bugfix-Release, die 3.2.2 ist über Weihnachten am 25. glaube ich erschienen. Genau, hinten an der Nummer sieht man, es ist nur ein Bugfix-Release, aber es gibt noch ein Release am Horizont. Ja, der, der, na, der Horizont ist weit weg, aber das Release ist gar nicht weit weg, nämlich am 14. Januar, ich hoffe ihr hört das alle noch rechtzeitig, am Donnerstag um Punkt 15 Uhr, äh, Großbritannischer Zeit, sagt man nicht mehr, ähm, wird es ein äh, neues Bugfix-Release für die Dreier- und für die Zweierlinie geben, obwohl für die Zweierlinie ja nur noch im Security-Falle was kommen sollte. Mhm. Und daran merkt ihr schon, das ist der Security-Fall. Genau. Ähm, ja, und kein ganz trivialer, jetzt auch nicht der Super-GAU, aber ist schon einer, wo das Team gesagt hat, wir wollen das immer sehr ordentlich handhaben, wir wollen in dem Zuge auch gleich mal unsere Security-Team-Prozesse verbessern mhm. ähm, und auch gut kommunizieren. Deswegen ähm, nehmt das auch ruhig ernst. Bei Mautic geht es ja immerhin immer um oder fast immer um personenbeziehbare Daten. Ja. Also seid sorgfältig und spielt dieses Security-Fix-Ding am 14. ruhig gleich ein. Ja. Da sind also neben diesen Security-Themen keine anderen Sachen drin. Es sollte hoffentlich also nichts anderes kaputt gehen. Ähm, also wir für uns spielen das auf allen Instanzen ein. Genau. Und dann haben wir einen großen Topf äh, zum Thema E-Mail-Verification. Wir hatten das Thema schon mal in einer alten Folge, zumindest angerissen. Das war die Folge 7, Link dazu in den Show Notes. Da ging es um das Clear-Out-Plugin von dem Greg White. Genau. Und E-Mail-Verification... Da geht es ja darum, die E-Mail-Adressen, die man in seiner Datenbank hat oder neu dazu reinbekommt, äh, abzuklopfen und kaputte gleich rauszufiltern, damit man nicht so viel Schrott in seiner Kontaktdatenbank hat. Genau. Und dafür gibt es Services, die sowas machen. Das ist immer die Frage, wie, wie kriegt man die jetzt mit Mautic verheiratet? Der Greg hat damals den ersten Aufschlag gemacht und ein Plugin dafür geschrieben. Mhm. Und jetzt gibt es lustigerweise innerhalb kürzester Zeit zwei weitere Ansätze dazu. Mhm. Nämlich einmal vom Joey Keller. Ja, keine Folge ohne Joey hat man nach gesagt. <lacht> ja, es sieht <lacht> gerade wirklich so aus. Und wir haben tatsächlich auch eher so immer die, die, die Menge der, der Sachen, die Joey so raushält vor der Brust und müssen mal sagen, okay, was streichen wir denn diesmal? <lacht> ja, super. Ne? Also, ja, könnte schlimmer sein, ja. genau. Gut, jedenfalls hat er sich zwei Services rausgepickt und dann mal mit ähm, Mautic exemplarisch verbunden. Und irgendwie, ich weiß nicht, wie die Abhängigkeiten waren oder ob es welche gab, es, es gab noch einen dritten Service, nämlich Mailfloss, die auch von sich aus gesagt haben, hey, bindet doch mal Mautic bei uns an. Also die, äh, das ist ein Anbieter, ne? Genau, ein Verification Service, genau wie Joey auch welche verknüpft. Ähm, und die haben halt auch eine sehr, sehr detaillierte Anleitung einfach mal rausgehauen, wie man ähm, deren Service wiederum mit Mautic verbinden kann und da, dann dadurch halt die Qualität in Mautic heben kann. Mhm. Und wie immer, das ist halt ein Offline-Service, äh, nicht Offline, ein externer Service mit allen ähm, Konsequenzen. Das heißt, ihr habt eine Datenweitergabe, ihr habt ähm, 
das eine Zeitverzögerung, es passiert nicht inline sozusagen während des Formulars etc. Ich bin immer noch ein großer Verfechter davon, eine Mautic integrierte Lösung mal zu haben, mhm. die so zumindest die wichtigen Checks macht, ja. so gut ist, wie es eben geht und dann halt idealerweise direkt im, Pla im, im Formular schon sagen könnte, so ähm, vielen Dank für deine E-Mail-Adresse, die scheint aber einen Tippfehler zu haben, bitte schau nochmal nach. Ja. Und äh, ohne irgendwie, irgendeinem Dritten die Daten geben zu müssen und äh, 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 GDPR-Probleme zu haben. Mhm. Ähm, ja, auch so ein Schubladenprojekt. Naja, <lacht> ab damit. Gut, speaking of E-Mail, ähm, äh, äh, es gibt ja auch immer dieses Dauerbrenner-Thema, eine optimale Auslieferungsrate zu haben, also E-Mails, gerade größere Mengen, die man rausschickt, ähm, nicht in Spam landen zu lassen, sondern wirklich im Postfach des Benutzers. Ja. Und dazu gab es mal wieder eine relativ lange Unterhaltung im Mautic Forum, die ich auch ganz gerne mal verlinken würde, mhm. denn ich glaube, das ist lesens lesenswert, da kann jeder, der nicht, nicht 100% tief darin steckt, äh, viel Interessantes rausziehen. Ja, super. Dann haben unsere Kollegen von OS Training, die sind ja durch die Mauticon auch bekannt, haben da ja auch ein bisschen was gemacht, ein äh, neues Video released, Anniversary Campaign, äh, auch dazu gibt es den Link in den Shownotes zu YouTube, ist sicherlich ein Tipp, ein Video, das man sich mal angucken kann. Genau, also ein Tutorial für solche Kampagnen, also wer, wer das, den Bedarf mal hat, der kann sich das gerne anschauen und ansonsten freue ich mich vor allem, dass es von OS Training auch so ein Video mal gab, die haben früher auch schon Mautic Videos gemacht, mhm. sind jetzt wieder am Start und ich hoffe, da kommen mehr. Super. Ja, ich würde gerade nochmal zurückblättern zu dem Thema Feature-Ideen. Ähm, Dinge, die man gerne hätte in Mautic, mhm. das geht ja noch ein bisschen weiter, also das sind im Prinzip Features, die man im Mautic Core gerne hätte oder einfach Third-Party-Dinge, Zusatzfunktionen, die man vielleicht an Mautic dran hätte, vielleicht sind es auch einfach Bugfixes, die man gerne endlich mal hätte und die große Frage ist, wie bekommt man das, mhm. außer man macht den großen PHP-Kurs und wird Mautic Core-Entwickler. <lacht> <lacht> ähm, Manchmal will man das ja mit Geld tun ja. und äh, das Stichwort da ist zum Beispiel Crowdfunding und es gibt bisher keine gute Crowdfunding-Infrastruktur für Mautic mhm. und das diskutieren wir tatsächlich gerade an mindestens zwei Stellen, zum einen für den Mautic Core, dass wir für den Mautic, also da tatsächlich in GitHub integriert eine Lösung schaffen, dass jeder die Möglich Möglichkeit hat zu sagen, dieser Bug, der nervt mich, ich steuere 100 Euro dabei oder Dollar äh, dazu und ähm, um, wenn das nötige Level erreicht ist, dann wird der Bug dann auch mal gegen Geld gefixt. Ja. Ne? Und also mit allen Varianten, die es da gibt. Aber das kann man sich für Features vorstellen, das kann man sich für Bugfixes vorstellen. Das hat alles Pros und Cons, aber, aber ich denke, da wird jetzt ein, ein erster Schritt kommen. Mhm. Das andere ist, dass halt Third-Party-Dinge auch Crowdfunding äh, technisch funktionieren könnten. Also wir haben ja neben diesem E-Mail-Thema von vorhin echt viele Sachen in der Schublade, wo wir sagen, okay, mit etwas Beteiligung von Dritten würden wir es halt gerne auch, auch beisteuern und Open Source stellen. Ja. Äh, auch da fehlt eine Crowdfunding-Infrastruktur. Vielleicht probieren wir da einfach mal das eine oder andere Modell für uns. Also zum Beispiel das Shopware-Thema hatten wir neu, ja. haben wir schon besprochen, weiß ich gar nicht. Also zumindest im Forum wurde das schon mal besprochen. Ich werde das auch mal verlinken. Mhm. Ähm, ich glaube fest, das bringt Mautic halt auch voran, wenn man sagt, okay, viele, es gibt Mautic-Entwickler, es gibt auch einfach viele Mautic-Anwender, die gar nicht in der Lage sind, die tollen Dinge ja. A einzuschätzen, B umzusetzen, die aber gerne ein paar Euro, 100 oder 1000, was auch immer, in den Topf werfen und dann gibt es ein neues Feature und Mautic ist wieder ein Stück besser geworden. Ja, auf jeden Fall. Jo, was die fließende Überleitung ist zu ähm, der diesen future, futuristisch, futuristischen Thema, das wir schon angekündigt haben, nämlich äh, Omnichannel und, und Voice äh, etc. Marketing in Verbindung mit Mautic, was natürlich auch heute so nicht da ist, aber halt auch mhm. ein interessanter Schritt sein könnte. Der Graf, den der sich gleich selber vorstellen wird, den kennen wir schon oder den kennt der eine oder andere schon, weil er das Thema auch bei der Mauticon schon mal in einem kleinen Talk erzählt hat ähm, und das Video gibt es auf YouTube. Auch das würde ich natürlich in die Show Notes packen. Ja. Um, und trotzdem haben wir gesagt, wir wollen uns da nochmal explizit drüber unterhalten. Genau genommen, vor der Mauticon hatten wir uns schon für dieses Interview verabredet. Und hier ist es nun endlich. Auf geht's. Well, today I'm very happy to 
welcome a person on the show who has been a speaker at Mordicon, so some of you may have heard him recently, and who has a bit of background in the Drupal world and, and is actually very active in the MarTech world. But today, that person is really focusing on voice and omnichannel marketing, and that person is Gaurav Mishra, located in New York City. Is that right? Welcome, Gaurav. Thanks, Akkad. Thanks for having me here. Um, hey. Yeah, glad, glad, to, who, glad to be a part. Yeah, thank you so much. For those who have not seen your talk yet from Modicon, um, tell us a little bit, a bit about yourself first, about uh, what you're doing, where you got there, etc. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. So, hi, everybody. I'm Gaurav Mishra. You know, as I could said, based of New York you know, still alive, uh, you know, with, with all this M pandemic going on in the New York City. So that's a win. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so been with uh, in this industry for about 13 plus years and uh, worked across multiple geographies, uh, you know, used to manage the APAC region for a long time in my mm -hmm. early days of my career. And now I'm looking at the North America region for region. And largely what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is work with enterprises. Uh, so organizations like Johnson & Johnson, you know, Staples, you know, Warner Brothers, you know, Estelle Order, you know, related uh, on a day-to-day -day basis for building digital experiences. So consulting with them, brainstorming with them on, you know, how to build, uh, you know, experiences across digital front, how to essentially look at the customer life cycle and, you know, uh, build revenue channels and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, that's my day-to-day -day work. And, you know, in that, you know, I come across, you know, with, you know, all the time, you know, working on different new channels. Um, voice is a very, very big part of my work in the last couple of years. Uh, you know, digital displays is another big piece. And I'll talk a little bit of that later on, uh, you know, when we go deep. But, but yeah, we, we, we've seen a lot of explosion in, in non-web, non-mobile channels in the last few years with enterprises. Yeah, very cool, because I think that is definitely an up-and-coming topic and uh, in a different, on a different level in different parts of the world. So some are ahead of the curve, some may be behind of the curve, and a certainly interesting topic for everybody. So tell us what you mean by that, by, by thinking larger, by, by involving more channels, etc. Um, how, how can that reach a goal and... and um, Next step, then, we, how can we do that, all that with marketing automation? Sure, can you, you paint know, maybe a picture of some, some multi-channel multi -channel campaign to start with to help us understand sure. really what you're talking about? Sure, absolutely. So I'll, I'll, I'll touch base with both, both of the points. I could, uh, um, and so, yes, absolutely. We, the basics are always there, which is, you know, you said attract, nurture, convert, right? Which is, you know, always the basics that, morticians um, and any marketing automation you know uh, you know expert you know always always take care of that and um, traditionally email sms you know web mob, you know channels are are very good channels right and you know and they've been tried and tested all over these years uh, but you know uh, but having said that you know these channels are also extremely saturated right you know the the attention span is getting smaller and smaller. And there was a time when, you know, uh, we had an attention span of about 30 seconds, uh, you know, a uh, few, few years back, right, when we used to run different marketing campaigns. But a recent report uh, came in where, you know, it said that the Gen Z, uh, which is the new, the next generation, attention span is about seven seconds. Now, with such much, such a saturation in, in all the channels, traditional channels as, as per se, which is email, web, SMS, right? How do you essentially capture the attention, right, in the seven seconds? And and that's where, you know, the whole concept of saying that, you know, which the new channel, which are the new channels, which are not yet tapped, which are, you know, more exciting and, you know, more, uh, you know, easier to uh, compete in, you know? So how, how, do we, how do we go about that, right? And that's where the whole channel of the whole, different channels come in place uh, so uh, you know and 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 that's where we, you know we have we are looking at a lot of trend in the in the marketing organizations and in large enterprises not really focusing or if they're focusing obviously the focus would be always on you know the traditional channel but doing a bigger focus or a much larger focus onto these new channels coming in digital displays virtual tryouts you know voice wearables 
right so these are becoming a big big part of the focus from a channel's point of view and mm. and and on to your question on multi channels right and i thought that's i'm glad that you brought that point uh, multi channels you know is is a, is in my opinion and again a little personal opinion but you know i've seen that you know coming as a as a trend in the industry as well people are actually not looking at multi channel right now but they are looking at something called omni channel and there's a very uh, you know basic difference between these two right and a, a lot of people actually you know use them interchangeably but but there is a there is a very basic difference between those two so when you know people look at multi channel they say that okay i'm doing email i'm doing sms i'm doing web right uh, and let me do voice and digital displays and you know uh, virtual tryouts as well and what they do is that they look at these channels in silos right rather than looking at them holistically as one world view right and that's where you know, the concept of omni channel comes in because omni channel tells us that let's not look at each of the channels in silos but look at a customer journey right look at that ent- entire attract nurture convert journey uh, in one cycle and say that how different touch points are actually you know helping in different from a conversion point of view across different channels in that entire customer journey right so you know just to give you an example let's say you know a you know a person comes in um, you know in a hotel and you know for for a reservation once he's to you know once he you know lands you know down from a flight in the airport he will check in from his mobile right and he will know that what are the different things that is going on in that that place right uh once he goes into the counter when he's checking in in the in the hotel itself he will be giving his information or either to a kiosk or to a real person right a lot of lot of a lot of you know uh, you know uh, organizations or a lot of hotel industries are actually bringing in all this self services kiosk to reduce mm-hmm. you know manpower so he will come in he will actually punch his information to a kiosk check in and you know give his preferences and things like that there itself and then you know he will go on he will walk through a lobby where he will have a lot of digital displays you know giving a lot of information in which he would be uh, you know seeing a lot of things going going on and a lot of information around the hotel around nearby attractions and things like that and once he goes into the room you know uh, for example marriott did that recently right and you know successful implementation with alexa where you have alexas in the room and it allows them to uh, do a lot of you know automation like you know controlling the in temperature of the room ordering stuff you know knowing about a lot of information right you know from the alexa itself and he will you know interact with that alexa in that point in that channel now in that entire journey we have actually looked at five different channels right we have uh, you know looked at the you know the web channel when he made the reservation a mobile when he looked at essentially uh, checking in from the hotel, hotel airport then we looked at the kiosk where he did in, you know information you know in person in the in the uh, you know checking in the in the hotel itself then we looked at the digital display where he found and you know consumed information at different places and then the fifth channel is the alexa which is the voice which is inside the room in the in room experience right mm-hmm. now if you want to run a campaign uh, for increasing your uh, revenue from the happy hour that you are you know doing in you know uh, inside the restaurant of that hotel right how do you essentially you know touch you know these each touch points each channels right from web to mobile to you know kiosk to digital displays to the alexa to essentially mm-hmm. you know give that happy hour information to that person right so that you know that person can actually get excited enough to come to the bar have drinks right and you know essentially give you you know conversion on that on that channel right or from sorry from that campaign from that happy hour campaign and that's where the omni channel view comes in right that when you start the 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 the, the entire touch turning so when the person is walking in and you know going into the kiosk as soon as you check in you you pop up an information and ask him that he does he want to register uh, right for the happy hour case right um, and if let's say you know he might register he might not register right mm-hmm. uh, you know but that's an awareness is definitely that you need to there and once he's walking in you are actually showcasing a lot of new pictures a lot of in, you know interesting pictures around on the digital displays on how my, how uh, exciting and how nice happy hour is how he can meet you know new people in this happy hour so a lot of visual centric campaign information or assets right on the digital displays that will mm-hmm. make him more interested around this happy hour and when he room, reaches his room uh, you know alexa and as he you know gets to 
you know uh, just just let's say you know maintain the temperature of the room you know along with that alexa says hey also can you uh, you know do you know that we are running an happy hour at 6 pm you know uh, where you can have these cocktails which are the best top cocktails our bartender makes right do you so want what you reserve did, a table <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, right. And there's a table there as well, right? Uh, with with Alexa, right? Uh, so with that, you know, three four touch points, right? In that marketing channel, what you did is that you are not looking at each channel as a silo, but what you are doing is that you are running one campaign and you are multi- using and touching each and every touch points, uh, you know, uh, from a from an omni-channel point of view across each uh, that entire customer journey, and and okay. that's the that's the real power that's coming in, right? So organizations like Estelle Order, Marriott, you know, all these big organizations have realized it, right? Uh, so, for example, if you walk into a store right now of Estelle Order, you see a lot of virtual tryouts there, and with pandemic, uh, where you are not allowed to try out a lipstick color, right? On you know, <laughs> as you used to do earlier, you know, this virtual tryouts, this whole investment that they've been doing in virtual tryouts over years, are now really uh, help, you know, very useful because now you mm. can essentially. you know try out lip, different lipsticks and you know and things like that and yeah. marketers are running campaigns you know in this uh, you know when you're trying one lipstick they are giving you a bundle uh, you know coupon and saying that hey you know this is a halloween bundle this is a thanksgiving bundle and things like that so yeah, yeah. this is a brave new world yeah um getting back to the hotel example which i find fascinating um mm-hmm. and uh, when i brought up the alexa reserve a table for me example that, that is uh, the opposite direction so it's a signal from the user to the system everything else seems to be a one way direction and of course when you build one build an interactive con- campaign it's always important to receive signals of any so- kind from from uh, users so when you think of all the new channels yep. is yep. that typically a one way one way street or no no absolutely not it, it, it is always you know two way street so just just going back to your you know uh, the 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 hotel example right so if you know that uh, you know uh, so <clears throat> typically the way that marketers think right they always look at you know running awareness you know and consideration campaigns and you know and then you know uh, conversion campaigns is is always the you know goal by running this campaign right conversion is always the goal so you know when you even you when you're doing awareness messaging on kiosk if i if i if as a user i just go there and register a table or reserve a table right there in the kiosk then uh, you know then you know a, a message goes back to the you know the, to the campaign that this person is already converted this person is okay. already registered the um, you know we the, can stop the campaign uh, exactly yeah. no yeah. and stop the campaign or just move that campaign mm, messaging changing. to more saying that exactly. okay right uh, great you know we so when when she talks to the alexa and says that you know so the alexa instead of saying hey you know there's a happy hour going on and you can meet new people instead of that he say that hey, great you know uh, also looking forward to you know host you at uh, the happy hour at uh, 7 pm and we have reserved your table and you know and and that information is with us right so making it more personal right but mm-hmm. really not you know looking to convert him because that person is already converted so you know all these touch points are actually really you know not one way right uh, virtual tryouts digital displays there are kiosks um you know these are all very two way conversation right uh, and you know capture can capture touch points events all the time okay do you see other i mean dig- digital display for instance i don't really see how that could be a a two way conversation unless there's a qr code or something that you could scan is that what you have in mind yeah yeah sure absolutely so you know um uh, so you know again again we can take an hotel example but you know more than that if you look at you know any large organizations right um, and uh, you know and you know if you look at in person in in you know rooms in ho- in lobby kind of experiences right digital displays mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, uh, so the two kind of digital displays are there right um, um you know you 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 would see a lot of touch based digital displays right coming in and oh, you know a lot of you know if you walk into the malls if you walk into the airports you would mm-hmm. see actually a lot of touch based digital displays already in place which can keep, keep, keep can take inputs of people right uh mm-hmm. which is uh, McDonald's is a good example like McDonald's do have this kind of displays in in you know as kiosks right in their in their uh, 
right? Uh, you know, in their stores. But apart from that, you know, yes, you, you're right. You know, QR codes is another uh, another good way, I right? And you know, you know, good example is the China, right? You know, China has been you know a huge user of the QR code. Uh, all these years and you know uh, so it, it is ranging from payments to right uh, you know to essentially different experiences right um, you know different augmented reality experiences all of that can be actually driven by the AR you know the augmented the the, the QR code so yes that's a, that's another way of coming in the third interesting way which is not a ma mainstream but I believe it would become a mainstream um, uh, very soon in the next two three years is essentially tracking right eye tracking and you know the the gestures if you will right gestures uh, which is uh, still new it's the technology is not new the te technology has been around for some time uh, yeah. but the implementation is not on the scale yet but gestures are becoming a, a, a you know a, a big part of the uh, in, you know technology shift as well which we will see mainstream coming in so all this digital display would have a gesture controlled um, you know, input, you know, where you can come in and, you know, build different, do different gestures to essentially, uh, you know, uh, you know, do a lot of activities, um, you know, and if we know, you know, which is a little scary part, uh, I would, I would believe a lot, it, it spooks a lot of people. Yeah. Um, uh, but big tech has been capturing a lot of face recognition, um, right, uh, and a lot of voice recognition data all these years, right? Uh, I would not be surprised, right? If you walk into us onto in, in 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 front of a digital display in the next few years, and you know that that digital display would recognize you and personalize the information uh, on the basis of uh, you know the store data that you it already would have with either Facebook or Google or you know mm -hmm. Apple or, or something like that, right? Oh, my so goodness. yeah, yeah. So I think we, it's it's a there is there is the technology is already there. Right. Yeah. It's just that uh, you know that it's the scale of how much what what you can do right uh, from from an input point of view is just gonna increase from day by day. It's it's going mainstream, right? Uh, especially with after pandemic, it has you know kind of multiplied in terms of the adoption, right? Uh, because mm -hmm. don't nobody wants to do touch right anymore, right? Uh, <laughs> and you know uh, and and you know less and less people want to talk to each other, right? There is more machines coming in uh, for for doing more of the stuff right more voice more yeah. gestures so yeah, yeah. it's it's going to increase you know that really is a brave new world in the overall yep. sense <laughs> yeah 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 okay but but um from from a um eagle was it eagle eyes perspective or so mm -hmm. um w w today in mordic we are thinking digital as in computer device so i'm sending signals to a browser to an email client to an sms client whatever mm -hmm. and, and users interact with that mm -hmm. and we have uh, old school out of home uh, advertising mm -hmm. and what we are basing ta uh, basically talking here about is, is uh, tons of channels that are digital that but that are not on my personal device but out there in the wild yep um so yeah and i'm cu really curious what else will, will come to it and what will really work out but but uh, i also think it It takes deep understanding and creativity, creativity to turn all that into a working campaign that is actually reaching a goal. You talked about awareness, which is probably easier to achieve, yeah. uh, but, but conversion is, of course, a more attractive goal. And if we can help support that, yeah. um, th then that's definitely worth it. Um, yeah, absolutely. Now, and, yeah, absolutely. And just, just, to, just to, you know, uh, echo to your point, I think, you know, we, while we think that, you know, the mobile and web and SMS is the only channels uh, we can leverage right now, right? More and more when, when, when we have talked with uh, and when we were working with companies, you know, usually all the rest of the channels are already there. It's not yet the, you know, the marketers are just not leveraging them, right? right. So, you know, if what I would you know, how, you know strongly suggest all the time to the marketers that they should, you know, just look very closely to their current uh, customer life cycle, right? And find different touch points uh, that the customer is touching, right? Even if they are not, and there's a good chance that they are just not leveraging these channels. They might be mm. there, they're just not leveraging it, right? Um, uh, already, right? So just wanted to make that point, yeah. Yeah, excellent. 
Now, a million dollar question. What does all this have to do with Morik? Yeah, absolutely. No, no, good point. I think, I think uh, obviously, uh, you know, if there is no practical implementation, then, you know, all this is just a, just a theory, right? Um, uh, so, you know, what, so Motic, you know, is good. The good part of the Motic is that unlike the competitions like, you know, I would say Marketo or, you know, uh, you know, uh, Salesforce or other, other, other platforms, Motic is open, right? Motic is completely open. Now, that means that if I am running, um, <coughs> there, there's a very interesting company, I can't name about it, but uh, that we worked for, you know, sometime, uh, you know, last year. Uh, and, you know, it's a very old com uh, organization that actually works with farmers, all over the United States, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you know, interesting part that all these farmers, they actually get all this information about grains, about, you know, the prices around, uh, you know, commodities and, and things like that, you know, on a, on a very old, uh, small, you know, I would not say a kiosk, but it's a small, like a, a, a display that they have, which is literally a, you know, a monochrome uh, display, right? You know, if you remember the monochrome displays, right? Literally a monochrome display, which gets, actually gets the data from satellite. So it's not even connected to the Wi-Fi. It directly uh -huh. gets the data from the satellite, right? I would have never imagined something like this still exist, right? In yeah. this, in this, in this days, right? Now, that means that, you know, now let's say if they want to, you know, use something like Marketo today, right? You know, Marketo yeah. would never, never in their life would be able to, you know, actually run a campaign for in this, you know, old monochrome displays because they, they just they just can't integrate it, right? Um, and, and that's where Motic, the power of Motic comes in, the power of open source comes in, right? Because you can actually, or anybody, right, can essentially, you know, say that, hey, you know, I know these are the channels which is not in the top priority for a organization like Adobe, right? Because this is not like on to scale. But in my use case, there is a channel which is, you know, very, you know, useful, right? Uh, you know, uh, if, you know, uh, uh, you know, it can be a, a television, right? Where I'm using, a, running a yoga studio and in the television, I have an app where, you know, I run, you know, yoga classes or it can be, a, you know, a, a, a kitchen work, uh, you know, where I'm, you know, doing a juicer and, you know, there is a small Google Nest hub right uh, in the kitchen mm -hmm. uh, where you know uh, you know people are actually taking you know recipes right uh, on on which juices to make right so you know depending on the organization uh, kind of organization that you are there always with some unique uh, touch points that you would have uh, depending on your business depending on your you know the work that you do and and there's a good chance that you know organizations like adobe or salesforce would never imagine even going in that direction because it's just too unique Right for for a few users, but that doesn't mean it's not important for you. Mm. It is imp important for at least you you as a use case, right? And that's where you know the whole Motic uh, you know APIs and you know there is a there's already a lot of applications already a lot of plugins already there, right? You there is a Twilio plugin uh, which does a lot of co you know voice and call uh, a lot of you know uh, you know uh, to, you know two two way SMS you know, input and output SMS as well. But you know there is there is there is tons of you know ways of you know, building these plugins on Motic, which can mm. be actually very very you know usable for you, right? Or very very useful for you for for your use case, but not be not be as big, you know, for for an Adobe to build a connector, right? Yeah. So using these plugins to build connectors, um, um, you know, or leveraging community connectors already out there. There are Zapier. There is a Zapier. Uh, connector available in the Motic community, and oh, Zapier yeah. has a has a very very huge integration, uh, mm -hmm. right? You know, it, it integrates with Alexa, it integrates with Google, uh, you know, uh, you know, voice, um, it, you know, it, you know, there's a good chance that it connects with its displays as well. Um, but so, so you don't really you're not really you know dependent on uh, on a large organization to build connectors, but you can actually get a freelancer to build a quick plugin, or you can do a quick plugin on yourself. Uh, and and essentially leverage a channel that you might not be leveraging right now and increase your conversions. Okay, so uh, maybe you're already describing where Mordic can be unique, mm -hmm. but but um, uh, first of all, all this omni-channel orchestration that you um, you are pitching, you say that that could be done uh, by Mordic. Mordic could be the hub of of all this omni-channel channel efforts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And, uh, yeah, we we need need an interface and plugin for everything, but but I I agree that's probably not a really big deal. And then the next 
thing is the other half of, of, of the medal that you described was come up with what really works for you, what really matters for your users and how, how you can really reach them and come up with a, an integrated um, and smart campaign. And uh, I still love the, the hotel thing that you described and the happy hour example. <laughs> and maybe it would really be a, a fantastic showcase for Mordic to just set up a, a demo environment and uh, make that work together. Like, like have those four or five touch points and let them play together and maybe even shoot a video inside of a hotel to, to demonstrate what we mean and how it can be done with Mordic. Wow, I'd love to do that. That, that that sounds like a wonderful idea actually that sounds like a wonderful idea um, and and it's very doable and very easy to do right and i think one of the things that we can actually showcase is that why it sounds complex how easy it is to implement this on the Mautic. you yeah. already have the basics in place you're already designing a campaign you're already designing a messaging you're already you know uh, creating different uh, you know touch points right in the Mautic itself it's just that you know how do you essentially just extend it to you know, at other other places. But yeah, you know that's, that's a wonderful idea. I think I really want to tackle that. If you don't mind, I'll get back to you maybe with a question or two or maybe ask you for a creative idea or comment. Sure. And then we'll make it happen. Cool. Hey, Absolutely. I love it. We would love to, would love to participate in that. But that's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a very wonderful idea. And uh, and I, I would like to, you know, insist that, you know, it is, you know, it is it is pretty straightforward to do it, right? It's not mm -hmm. as complex, but it it would be a great demo to uh, you know put together uh, for the Mautic community. Hmm. Hmm. I'm excited. <laughs> cool. Very very good. Um, I think I I took a lot of notes already, and I, I'll ask you afterwards to give me uh, some URLs that I can, can put in the show notes for people to look at examples or at what do I know, Zapier integrations, etc. So mm -hmm. if you, dear listener, want to learn more about it, I'll point you to a ton of things, including the the Morticon talk. Um, is there a LinkedIn page or something where people can find you, Gaurav? Sure, absolutely. Uh, uh, you can, uh, the, I think the best way to, you know, find me is, you know, just go to gmishra.com which is, uh, you know, my, you know, shot of Gaurav Mishra, G of Gaurav and then Mishra. So yeah. gmishra.com and it will take you to my LinkedIn profile, oh. right? Yeah. And connect me with there on and there. Or I can, you can find me on Twitter as well on G Mishra again. And, you know, I'm pretty active on both Twitter and LinkedIn and, you know, would love to connect um, um, and, and share more. Excellent. I put it all in the show notes. Yeah, And um, I thank you very, very much for your time today and the insights. Uh, there's a lot of experience behind it, you can tell. And I'm very much looking forward to do some some really nice showcase with it. Thank you, Akir. Thank you for having me here. You know, it was lovely talking to you. Uh, and thanks for, uh, you know, Morty Community for hosting, uh, you know, uh, in the podcast. You know, absolutely. We'd love to, you know, stay in the conversation, keep, you know, keep on you know, building new ideas, building new, uh, you know, new exciting solutions and looking forward to participate. Excellent. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time and talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Take, bye. Take care. Yeah, stay safe. Cheers. Bye. Ja, äh, super spannendes Thema. Ähm, tatsächlich sind ja schon ein paar Tage vergangen seit dem Interview <lacht> und die Welt hat sich ein Stückchen weiter gedreht. Wir werden nämlich jemanden mit einer Masterarbeit zu dem Thema hier im März haben. Genau, und wir haben tatsächlich, wie jetzt spontan in, aus dem Interview eben entstanden, haben wir mit dem Graf hinterher abgemacht, äh, dass er auch dabei ist bei diesen kleinen Projektchen, Projektchen und Showcasechen. Ähm, und ich bin schon ganz aufgeregt, ich freue mich. Ja, also das wird super, glaube ja, ich auch. Genau. Ja, und damit kommen wir dann auch zum Ausblick, was so ansteht in den kommenden Wochen und Monaten. Und das ist natürlich dominiert von dem Thema Mauticon. Mhm. Nach der Mauticon ist vor der Mauticon. Geht schon wieder los. Hat, hat, geht schon. <lacht> <lacht> so, wenn man. Ähm, ja, wir hatten ja letztes Mal schon drüber gesprochen, über die Idee oder den, das Konzept, ähm, in Q2 eine virtuelle Mauticon wieder zu haben, wie auch letztes Jahr. Plus, wenn es gut läuft, in Q4 eine in-person Mauticon, nicht global, sondern irgendwie EU oder US oder sowas in der Art oder North America. Und ähm, im Moment konzentrieren wir uns natürlich auf das virtuelle Event. Das letzte war mega gut und ähm, dies wird bestimmt noch besser. Bestimmt. Und das heißt aber auch, die Arbeiten gehen schon wieder los. Und wenn du 
als Teilnehmer vielleicht dabei warst, als Zuhörer oder als äh, YouTube-Anschauer und diesmal ein bisschen aktiver dich einbringen möchtest. Wir sind immer noch dankbar für Leute, die mitmachen mhm. in der Vorbereitung oder in der Moderation oder als Speaker oder was auch immer. Ähm, es geht jetzt los. Jetzt ist der perfekte Zeitpunkt zum Einsteigen. Die Grundlagen sind ja da. Wir können diesmal auf diesen Grundlagen aufbauen und halt noch besser werden. Und wir freuen uns über jeden Mitmacher. Kontaktiert gerne mich direkt. Okay. Ähm, und ähm, dann macht das auch wirklich Spaß. Auf jeden Fall. Jo, Thomas, letzte Eckart. Worte? Letzte Worte, das war wieder sehr schön. Oh, Mann. <lacht> ich fand das auch so toll. <lacht> nee, Nein. also ich ja. habe tatsächlich fachlich sonst nichts mehr beizutragen heute. Ja. Also wenn ihr uns auch vor toll fandet, dann sagt uns das auch gerne. <lacht> Trotzdem, also äh, wir nehmen auch gerne da Kritik. Ne? Feedback ist immer super. Wenn ihr Feedback für uns habt, immer gerne her damit. Ja, ich habe, ähm, wann war das? Spät im Dezember habe ich mir sagen lassen, wir haben gar keine Kontaktinfos auf der Mautik. Oh Gott, wie heißt das Ding hier? Modicast-Seite. Modicast -Seite? Äh, da, da ist nichts. Äh? Gar, Nein? Keine E-Mail. Wie kein... könnte das denn sein? Nee, also falls ihr die dort nicht findet, weil wir immer noch nicht dazugekommen sein, sein sollten, dann könnt ihr mit dem Stichwort Modicast auf allen denkbaren äh, Social Kanälen. Social Kanälen. Nee, nicht Social Kanälen, außer TikTok. <lacht> könnt, ihr, <lacht> <lacht> könnt ihr uns finden. Ähm, Ansonsten schaut einfach auf die Webseite und hoffentlich hat Thomas oder ich oder Leon oder wer auch immer bis dahin was nachgetragen. Genau. Ja, wir freuen uns auf Feedback und wir freuen uns vor allem in der nächsten Ausgabe wieder bei euch zu sein. Bis dann. Bis dann. Tschüss. Tschüss.